you could see all of this grease that is pushed out. And if I move the bearing, you could see that play in the bearing. Hello now, there and welcome back to another video. My name is Arieldi. In today's video we have this 2005 Lexus RX330 with the wheel bearing noise. The customer has replaced the wheel bearing twice in the last year. Uh, the last wheel bearing only lasted a thousand miles. I inspected the car yesterday. I don't see the spindle looks okay. Uh, I'm gonna put it down to maybe installation error, but I'm gonna see if there's any spindle damage inside. The first one that they installed was from carparts.com, which uh, as you may know, they're hit or miss with, with uh, you know online parts. They ordered a hub and they ordered the bearing. And then the second time, which only lasted a thousand miles, they only did the bearing. Maybe the hub is damaged or maybe it's installation error. But in this video, I'm going to show you guys how we're going to uh, replace the wheel bearing on this vehicle. Before we take this wheel off, I want to show you guys how to check for a failed wheel bearing. So one of them is going to be by noise. So sometimes if you can spin, you can spin the wheel and you can tell for the noise. Uh, you can also drive the vehicle and um, you know if you suspect the left wheel making noise you turn the wheel to the right if the noise gets louder you know then the left is making the noise. It's because it gets loaded when you're turning right. The other way to check is by turning the wheel like this and you can see how much this moves. That tells us that this bearing is uh, destroyed. Place the wheel to the side. Let's spin this like this. And we want to take the caliper bracket off and we want to attach it up here to the spring. It's a good idea to put the bolts back where you remove them, that way you don't lose them. I'm going to leave that there for now, take the rotor off, place the rotor to the side, and let's get a strap attached to this so it's secure. What we want to do next is remove this axle bolt so we can strain the wheel. Axle bolt is a 32 millimeter. Make sure the axle is loose. If you're able to push it by hand, that means it's good. No need to worry about anything else at the moment. Our next step in the process is gonna be removing the wheel speed sensor. On this vehicle, it's a 10 millimeter. It's nice and loose. It's a good idea to put this bolt back where it was so we don't lose it. We don't have to go looking for it later. It's right where it should be. Now our next step is going to be removing these two big bolts here. They are 22 millimeters. After getting these two big bolts out, now we can take off our tie rod end. There's going to be this retention clip here that we have to remove. You bend the front of it so it's straight and then just pull the back like that. Cotter pins. That's what they're called. They're called cotter pins. Sort of like a retention clip. And it's going to be a 17 millimeter for the tie rod end. All right guys, so if you look over here, I'm gonna try to, to get this so you guys could see it. I hope the camera will focus on it. You could see all of this grease that is pushed out. And if I move the bearing, you could see that play in the bearing. Now, 
I wonder why that is uh, that it happened like that but all of the grease is pushed out which could be installation error or it could be maybe they didn't put the c-clip or something like that this is going to be a 19 millimeter We used our ball joint uh, presser tool in order to get this out. I know. Okay, and this is what we have. We have our this protective ring here, which we have to remove carefully. We don't want to damage it. Considering it was done a month ago may not be that bad to take out this ring is out guys I'm pretty sure this was installation error so <clears throat> let me clean this up and I'll show you guys a closer look to this uh, because I'm pretty sure they pushed this this uh, lower half of the bearing they probably did not support it when they were pressing it and it pushed it out so let me clear clean this and I will show you guys here we are just going to use some brake clean to clean this up check this part out right over here the snap ring is flush with this part of the bearing here and it's not supposed to be so let's try to get the snap ring out Finally, we did it. As you guys can see here, I accidentally took the bearing out. So, <laughs> definitely I could tell, I mean, this thing is not installed. Like, look at this thing. Look at how this is. Look how loose this is. If you know about pressed bearings, they're never that loose. All right. So, you can see all this pitting here. So what I think, what I thought initially, which I told the customer, I said it's probably a bad uh, hub and it's causing issues. Now I still believe that there's definitely pitting here and all it took to get this out, I just tapped it once with a hammer and I used this right here, it's a 21 millimeter. So I just put it like that, tapped it once, fell right out. Now you know, if you've done these before, first of all, they're never, they never fall out like this. The rear bearing does, but not the front one, okay? But these ones, I mean, they're just destroyed. <clears throat> and I think the culprit was the bearing, I mean, the hob, excuse me. Like I said, this thing just fits, this right here, just fits right over it. It's never that loose. Never, ever, ever supposed to be that loose. I mean, these things are supposed to be pressed on there. Okay, so what we have to do next, this happened, and sorry I didn't show you guys. Uh, but for your vehicle, I mean, it will likely require a lot of hammering. So this was a fluke, mainly because it was either installed wrong which I believe it to be the case and also 
this hub here, uh, I mean it's destroyed. Now we're not done with this yet, we still have to press this part out right over here. So let's put this on the, on the press and press that out. Okay, I'm gonna start by using this adapter right here, which I have from a bull joint press kit. It should, well, it might fit over here. I don't have too much to grab to, considering this whole thing fell apart. But let's try to see if this will grab it. Before we go pressing, let's put some safety glasses on, just in case. Of course, I forgot to press play on this one as well. But, uh, this is what we used. What I showed you guys before, that's exactly what we used. We got this all the way out. And, um, but when I got to the bottom here, the bearing touched this. So what I did, it was 75%, 80% out already. So I just took them out and just hammered it with the hammer and it came right off because there wasn't much tension on there. Now let's inspect our spindle, make sure our spindle is good and then we can go ahead and install our new bearing on there. To inspect our spindle, you just want to look inside, make sure there's no pitting. Um, see a little bit in there. There is some pitting right over here, probably can't see it, but I'm going to clean this up and uh, we'll have a better idea of how this is, but I think this should be good to go, We're, we should be okay to use this. Okay, here we have our new hub and bearing, so these things are supposed to be pressed together as you saw with the other one, it was loose. To install the bearing, you can use the old one, I have one here, which was actually from a little bit newer uh, was a Toyota I believe because you want to apply even pressure on this thing you just want to make sure you're going in even have a long ways to go what we can do now is use this one because uh, this other one is just slightly bigger so we want to use the original one and we can press that all the way in press got tight so it should be pressed all the way in we look at the other side so this side nice and saved this side it's nice and saved so it's all the way in there all right and on this side we can see the groove for the snap ring is right in there so let's put our snap ring in that's our next step our bearing and c-clip are in the retaining clip it's all the way up to here now this is one of the most important things right now is installing this hub but also making sure 
that this does not get damaged all right uh, the back side so we have to support this side right here You wanna before we keep going you wanna make sure you remove it keep checking the back want to make sure the back is not getting pushed out which in this case it is not it looks pretty good to me let's keep going All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back with this vehicle. I had to run away to go do some brakes, but I am back. So here's a little story. So after I installed everything, I checked the bearing and it was making noise. So what I did was I called AutoZone. They sent me a new kit. I removed that one. I installed this one. This one is all good. Um, I did notice the old bear the old new bearing that I installed today that the outer lip so the outside edge where the hub goes into first that one was hard even without putting the hub in it it wouldn't spin properly uh, and I followed the same uh, steps also when it was in the box it did not have a plastic wrapper around it so I'm wondering if it was just a defective part defective bearing but they sent me a new kit I installed the kit this is the bearing no more noises it sounds great so all we have to do now we got to put this ring around it you got to make sure that the hole lines up with the hole where the sensor will slide on the wheel speed sensor will slide on okay the snap ring also is in here so let's get this on and we'll put it in the car okay the ring is on here we made sure that the hole for the wheel speed sensor lines up with the sleeve from the inside right there all right so let's get it installed in the car we'll take the car on on a drive and uh, i think this customer is going to be happy and i don't think he's going to have any more failures because i do believe that the last one was a installation error that's why it failed prematurely within a thousand miles also guys the threads on this axle are kind of damaged and i did let the customer know yesterday about this let me try and uh, put a nut here I have a new one we'll see if the nut goes in and out smoothly because if it does not we got to replace this axle I'm gonna use some of this tap magic uh, oil it's meant for cutting uh, lubricate when you cut and I'm gonna put it on there and also on my nut because I want to see if we can clean this. And I don't have a thread chaser this big. So the goal is to try and save this customer some money here. So if we can get it, that would be nice. If not, you know, it is what it is.
Okay, I think I think this is gonna be fine. It went all the way in there, cleaned the threads up a little bit. And if for some reason this thing does not go in there smoothly, I'm gonna tell the customer that they need they need a new one. This was a 19 millimeter. Torque spec for the lower ball joint is 91 foot pounds. We're gonna put these bolts for the strut through. There's one. There's two. We're going to torque these to 170, 170 foot pounds. Both of those are tight. Let's get our axle nut in here, but we're not going to get the axle tight yet. We just want to put that in there. That's good enough. We're gonna put the tie rod at 36 foot pounds. We want to make sure our cotter pin can go in there. Once the cotter pin is through, just twist one of the ends so that's all good. Let's get the rotor on here. I'm going to put the pad that fell out, I'm going to put it right back in here. Okay, perfect. You want to make sure that the brake hose is not twisted. We'll slide that in there, like so. Okay, the last thing we have to torque is our axle nut, which is 217 foot-pounds on this vehicle. And I think this is probably a 30, so let me go find a 30 millimeter. We have our 30 millimeter. Now there's two ways we can tighten this up without the wheel spinning, because what's going to happen is, if you put any sort of torque on this, especially 217, our hub is going to spin. Right, so we're going to get to a certain torque and then it's just going to spin, right? 
the way we can stop that is let's first set this to 217. We're at 217. And I actually saw a video about this with, for this trick. You just put a something like that at the bottom that will keep this tensioned and we can go ahead and tighten our nut. There we go, 217, our axle is tight, no more up and down play. I forgot one of the most important things, which is the wheel speed sensor. We need to put that on here. Let's clean this head off so it doesn't have any metal shavings. Put that on there. Let's get our 10 millimeter in there. Okay, all good. Now let's get the wheel on. Okay guys, the road test is done. This car is all good to go now. There's no more noises and there's no more rattling that the customer was complaining about and uh, i drove the car wheel feels tight everything feels good so the customer is going to come pick it up and he should be happy i don't think he'll have another issue again i think it was just the installation error uh the previous two times and also the hub being pit pitted like that all right thank you for watching and i will see you guys on the next one Bye bye